Hey everyone, in today's video, we're gonna fix this Bogan Challenger CHB50. This is an old vacuum tube amplifier from the 1960s. It was used for PA systems and like grocery stores or churches. In a previous video, I took this thing apart, we powered it up, and uh, it really didn't go so well. Okay, so that is red plating right there. That is a red plate. Unfortunately, there's some very old capacitors underneath this amplifier, and we need to go inside and get them out and replace them. So I've ordered all kinds of parts from Mauser.com. I've got appropriate capacitor replacements for everything inside of here. We're gonna take a look at everything, replace them one by one, and see if it works when we're done. So let's go. This thing lays kind of nicely on its back, so I don't really have to worry about too much. That is uh, stable enough, if you ask me. Before we dive in, we're probably gonna wanna look at the schematic a little bit. So let's go over there right now. So this right here is actually the schematic for the entire thing, and it's actually, you know, quite simple. You've got uh, five tubes in here. It looks like there's seven tubes, but there's actually only five because these two are actually the same tube and these two are the same tube. Now, from what it looks like, this tube right here is your microphone preamp. So if you were to plug in your microphone or a guitar or a record player, you'd want to use this section. And then we look over here, our aux is going straight into this tube. You've got your bass and your treble right here. This is going to do stuff in your preamp. And then over here is the power amplifier stage. These are your two power tubes. One of these was red plating in the uh, previous video. And you can see that uh, you got 420 volts going to uh, each one. That's, that's big volts, many volts there. Um, and that 420 is coming from down here. Here's your power supply. So that's kind of how this schematic works. If you check out the power supply, you've got your transformer right here that's connected to the power from the wall. And it looks like you've got two windings here. This might be for the heaters, for the tubes. And then this right here is going to your uh, rectifiers. Then over here is your big electrolytic capacitor. You've got a 420 volt feed, a 320 volt feed, and a 300 volt feed. And those are all being controlled by these resistors. But they each have their own dedicated capacitor, so that's kind of cool. And the way you use this is you look for 420 right here. 420 is right there, so that's where these lines are going. They're going over to this power supply here. The 320, where's that gonna be? There's 320 right there, 320. 300 right there, so. That's how you read the schematic. That's kind of what's going on here. So I think it'd be fun to start with these two right here. These are the big giant orange ones. Right here is our replacement parts. You can see they're uh, much smaller. These guys are held in here with little clamps that are riveted together. So now what I can do is I can work on desoldering each wire. Looks like they both attach right here, so Take the Heiko FR300 and we'll heat this up and suck all the solder away. So look at that right there. I've got it heated up. I can just kind of slowly bend that out and not splash myself with solder if I can help it. So that's out of the way. Now we can likely do something similar with the other one. At this point, I think I'm just going to cut this wire right here. That may make my life easier. And I'll cut this one also. Because remember, we don't have this big massive part anymore with these nice leads. Now we have this, and we need to figure out a way we're gonna connect this to where it needs to go. Now there's three diodes in this thing. I read that a 1N 4007 one amp, 1000 volt diode should replace all three. Even though there's uh, two different kinds in here. Two of them are the same, one's different. If you just put a 1N4007 in place of all of them, you should be okay. Oh, whoops. I've had that on manual focus from when I was looking at the service manual that entire time. So, maybe you'll be able to see better now. Now we've got our black cat, 0.1 microfarad 600 volt capacitor. I think we've got an ideal film replacement for that over here somewhere. Yep, yeah, right here we have a 0.1 microfarad 630 volt replacement, so even better than the original. So much smaller too. 
Okay, so we've basically got everything ready to solder here. You can't really see it too well, but I did replace the uh, diode right there. And then right here is where this one used to connect. Right there, there's our new 0.1 microfarad. And then it connects over there. We've got each of the diodes replaced over here. And then this guy, here's where I got to be super creative. Um, it attached right here, the positive lead did. But what I was able to do is uh, solder a wire right here covered in heat shrink and then we just go straight back to where it originally connected. And the best part about soldering point to point is that you don't have to worry about damaging PCB traces. You just gob it on there. Leave your iron on there as long as you want. Just make sure the solder flows. Okay, maybe not as long as you want, but you get the point. And there you have it, everyone. What we've essentially just done here is we've rebuilt the power supply. Unfortunately, I don't think the power supply was giving us our red plating issues. That was all happening over here, where uh, the actual amplifier is. So these guys here seem simple enough to replace immediately. Okay, I jumped ahead here because I think you get the idea. Here's all the stuff we saw come out earlier, and I just got these five out. So yeah, we have all new films inside of here, and there's the uh, new electrolytic right there, a little 10 microfarad guy. But I also wanted to talk about this thing right here. This is a uh, combination capacitor. I don't know the actual name for it. What we've got here is four capacitors in one, and it has the values for each capacitor written on the capacitor. So we've got 20, 20, 10, and 10. And then different voltage ratings too over there. The schematic says something different. This is that capacitor right here. It says they're all 20 and all 450, but looks like they spec'd it a little bit lower for what was actually on the amplifier. So basically what I'm doing is I'm gonna recreate that circuit just with uh, electrolytics like this. So this might look complicated, but it's not, trust me. So. I'll put the schematic on the screen also, just so you can follow along here. So basically what I've done here is I've taken the combo cap. This red wire is basically coming off of the transformer and or this resistor right here. So this is going to our large cap, the, uh, the 47 that I bought, and then that's going to ground. And the way I did ground is I took the one pin on this terminal strip. See, this is how these terminal strips are made. I just soldered this pin straight to ground. So that's how we're getting ground connection on all three of these caps actually. But then how did I do the resistors? So also, take a look at this again. These holes right here on the bottom of the terminal strip, I put the resistors right through those down here. So those blue things, those are the new resistors that I got. So we go from this point right here, and then we're jumping over to here to get the 320, which is this orange wire. And then that has a capacitor going to ground right here. And then, you see this resistor on top right here? That guy right in there? This goes to here, and then this is our 300 tap with another capacitor going to ground. So, that's how it happened. I kind of enjoy the chaotic look of it. I don't know. I kind of enjoyed the challenge of making it fit in there without changing anything. Might be driving some people crazy, but, you know, my amp. I do what I want. I think it's time to place the tubes because this tube is a tube I never should have put in this amp. This is a 6L6GB and it's not rated as high as the 6L6GC. So basically what happened is we put a plate voltage onto this tube that's greater than what it's designed to see. Lucky for us, we have a matched pair of 6L6GC tubes from Antique Electronics Supply. Antique Electronics Supply sent these to me just for this video, and they would like to give you, the viewer, a discount on their website. Use code AHFIX10 for 10% off your order. That is A-H-F-I-X-1-0 for 10% off your order. Thank you very much to Antique Electronics Supply. Let's put these tubes in and see what we've got.
Look at that. So shiny. So much nicer than this dusty tube. <laughs> we haven't even added the guitar jacks yet, so that's going to be the best part. So really the biggest and kind of most bare minimum thing we need to do to make this a guitar amp is change these inputs right here. You see, well it says mic 1 under that, and this one says mic 2. We want to get rid of these things. We want to replace those with modern connectors. We're going to be using these cheap little quarter inch connectors right here that I got on Mauser. This is going to work with your standard guitar cable. So once you have this in here, you can just plug your guitar right in. And in order to get these out, what we got to do is drill out the rivets. So now that we've got those out, how are we going to get these guys in place of them? So this is what you call G10 or FR4. It's just a um, scrap kind of PCB fiberglass material. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it to size. Oh yeah, there's my piece. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in from the other side with a Sharpie. I'm going to hold this in one place and I'm just going to, you know, mark it. So the next place we're headed is the drill press. We're going to drill these for a size 440 screw. I've got some little screws and nuts that we're going to use to mount this thing. Drill a hole big enough to fit this thing and then we'll secure it with uh, the mounting hardware. So let's go to the other bench. So for the 440 screw it says an eighth inch should work just fine. And then for this, apparently a 3 8 inch bit should work just fine. I think I can do better than that. At least I got the whole size right. Okay, so I've got these things wired up here. I've got the wires soldered on where I think they're supposed to be. That's how it was stock. So let's take a look in the back too. Yeah, I tried to do my best centering, but you know, kind of screwed up the one. So I got a little bit carried away here and uh, see all these orange guys and that white guy there. Uh, these are all the extra capacitors that were inside of here. Everything in here has now been replaced with a film or modern electrolytic capacitor. I also want to talk about modifications so let's start over here. These two inputs right here, I don't even know what these inputs did but basically what I've done is I've made one of them R or L because this is a mono amplifier and most of the music we listen to today is in stereo. So what I did was I wired this guy in parallel with aux one. So basically you put your R and your L in these two. And I did it this way because you know we still want to have aux two open for whatever we want to use it for, but you can't fit two RCA cables next to one another, at least the modern cable I'm using. See these connectors are kind of chunky and uh, you can't fit them next to one another. So now I can do R and L and I don't have to pick one and then they just blend together. So you have stereo turning right into mono in here. You don't have to change a setting on your thing to have your output go in mono or whatever. So let's test this thing real quick. Make sure that uh, it is indeed working after I did all this work out of all the ceramic capacitors here. And then we'll plug it into the uh, guitar and see what it sounds like there. Okay, so we've got everything plugged in, hooked up to a speaker. Let's see what happens. Let's play everyone's favorite song and see if it comes through. It sure does. I'd call that working. We've got true mono sound because we linked the uh, tape booster and aux one inputs together the same input so it's blending the right and left channels from the phone so that's really good and we got good bass control bass gone bass back treble gone treble back yeah the only issue we have really left with this thing is uh, if I take my mic You hear all that crackling, staticky 
It's the only thing left wrong with this thing. And uh, I think that that's just due to this little uh, 6C4 tube starting to go. It says Bogan on it, which means it's original to this amplifier, which means it's, well, 60 years old. I ordered two on eBay. New old stock, it was 15 bucks. They'll get here eventually, but that's not enough for me to delay this video editing any further. You know, there's just something about vacuum tube sound. Um, I hadn't heard it until maybe five years ago, like this at least, when I bought uh, some mono blocks for my friend. And uh, it, it really opened my eyes to this world and you know what's possible in terms of sound. It's, uh, it's the path of least resistance. So, I don't know. These things are finicky, as you're hearing and you're seeing, and they use a lot of power and they get really hot. So, I mean, there's a good reason why solid state took over from these. You don't have to really maintain a solid state amp versus one of these. You know, you're going to be dinking with it basically the whole time you own it. How about we get this thing on the scope, and I want to show you what really makes a tube amplifier so unique, and one thing that's really important to know it about the sound. We're gonna see it on the scope. Okay, so we measure this the same way we measure it on a solid state amp. You know, we take an eight ohm load and we connect our scope and our voltmeter across it so we can read the waveform and the voltage that it's putting out. So we're at zero volume now. I will turn on the tone. We'll see if we've got it. Okay, we do. So the amp is turned on, we're putting the tone through and we're just bringing this up until we see clipping. But this right here, this is what makes tube amplifiers unique. I'm going to zoom in on that waveform. Every time that I've done this on a solid state amplifier, you see sharp, flat edges right there. Look at the top of this waveform. It's still curved. There's not a sharp curve going into that straight edge and down below. It's still like that. This is everything. This is why guitar players like this, is because the distortion is so smooth. I'm going to put an old video on the screen and I'll show you, like, we get flat lines with a solid state amp. With this thing, we get smooth lines leading into distortion. So something might not be perfectly right here because when we get up to the high volume, we see we hit our distortion around 10 volts, which is only 12 watts per channel. So. This thing's rated at 50 watts per channel. I have to double check that that's RMS. You know, regardless, I know how loud this thing can get and it sounds uh, pretty awesome. So here's the completed setup. We've got this thing plugged in and hooked up to the Altec right here. This is the one I just rebuilt. You should check out that video if you haven't seen it. So I've got the master set to, uh, you know, some volume and the microphone's turned down. So let's play this real quick. So let me do this. So, it's working. It's a little loud. And then also, we have the auxiliary hooked up. one thing that's really cool about this thing. So say you want to play guitar, but you don't have a drummer with you, just run a drum track through the amp, through your, you know, non-preamplified input, like I was just doing with the music, and you've got yourself a drummer. So now you all get the joy of hearing me play guitar. I know it's a little weird playing acoustic guitar as an electric, but that's just kind of what we're dealing with here.
often and I'm not that good, but I can figure things out. So I think that's about all I'm going to do here today. Um, remaining things with this, uh, if you know why that uh, buzzing sound is happening, if you think that tube will fix it, uh, I'd like to hear your opinion. And uh, if you think it's kind of weird that this thing's only putting out about 12 watts per channel when it's rated at 50, supposedly, I'd like to hear your input as well. But until then, I'm pretty happy with this thing. It's actually working again, and I think I'll hang on to it for a minute. So, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something, and I will see you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.